welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, and as always, I have a very special guest for you, child star Caden Hargrove. He'll be with us for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus Beyond TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. Like I said, I have a very special guest. It's not every day I get to have a child star in my seat. So welcome to Caden Hargrove. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Well, it's Definitely. great to have you here. You know, like I said, we, I always have adults, but I, I kind of, I always connect with the kids. I'm a big kid myself, um, so it's kind of nice to always get to have a, a child star every now and then in the seat. So, definitely great to have you here. Um, but before we even get started, let's talk about you. Who is Kaden? Let's talk about who you are. Oh, uh, well, I'm a very energetic and silly person. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very creative. Um, and I have many talents. That's great. When did you decide that you started to have a passion and a, a love for theater and arts? Because you're only 11, by the way. Um, well, back when I was, like, younger, um, I was, like, watching TV. And I was like, I wonder how you get on TV. So mm -hmm. I Googled it. Um... And then I decided I want to be on TV one day, and I want to be an actor. So how was that? You go to your mom and dad, tell them you want to act. What was the reaction? Uh, they said, <laughs> well, they said find a theater, and then, well, I couldn't find a theater, of course. So then I, um, my mom got an email from Little Malika. Um, and asked if I wanted to be in it. And I said, sure, I'll be in it. And then after all the leadership classes and uh, speaking um, in front of audience classes, uh, then we had to do it like a talent for the, a talent for the like um, actual. Like play? Yes, yeah, sort of. And then uh, my mom said I should act. And so I acted out, um, it was like Tucson Louverture. Mm -hmm. And my mom recorded it, luckily, and then put it on YouTube. Wow, and, and it all started from there. Mm -hmm. So how was that experience for you? Well, at first it was scary. Mm -hmm. Like, I was really nervous. But then I, as I walked on stage, I, it, it didn't feel that bad. Now, getting into character, because Toussaint Louverture is a very important character. I mean, he did a lot historically, so that's a big role for you to take on. I mean, not a lot of people could say, well, my first role was, <laughs> you know, so when you think about it, you actually got something pretty big. So give us some details on that. Well, my mom actually had to do, like, research, and, well, she actually knew a lot about Toussaint Louverture, um, but she just, she did uh, more research to get like more of the details. And we actually went to the Haitian embassy in Washington, D.C. Wow. And we saw this movie on like what Tucson Louverture did for like everybody. Um, and my mom found a song uh, called Lomis de Paduso, meaning misery is not sweet in French. And we used that song for the opening of the play. Wow. So then fast forward, that all happened, and that's, that was your very first play, officially. So after that, you act in the play, how do you go back to just being regular Caden? Um, well, I got a lot of love on social media, of course. Um, and other than that, it was just the same. School, homework, uh, going outside, playing basketball. Did your friends actually come support the play, come see you? Uh, no, not really. It'd be like that sometimes. 
But then I'm sure after they realize what you were doing, it just brings for the next one. Yes. So what really goes into it? So there's, I'm sure there's a lot of people at home who are like, I want to get into acting. I want to do this. But kind of give us a, a behind the scenes view of it since you actually got to do it. You know, there's rehearsals. You have to practice. You have to do time management. What are some of the things that you had to really sacrifice to be able to do this? Well, um, normally I would like go outside every day and play with all my friends. But I like to sacrifice that time and I had to like do my homework first. Like as soon as I got home, eat dinner and then practice the, my lines. And that's my my mom I practiced it my lines with my mom mm -hmm. and she said I actually learned in like two days like the lines in two days and that's when she said she really noticed that I could be something big mm -hmm. so you enjoy memorizing your lines getting into character did you did you say rather that going to that museum and watching a, a getting extra research done did that help you get into the character yes very much so because I actually know his, yeah, I acted out his feelings, and like, I really got to know after the movie, of course, because I got to see like how he felt and like a whole, a whole lot of research on it. What was the hardest part for you in getting to do this? The hardest part, well, the lines was off, was hard, but it wasn't the hardest part. Like going out on stage and actually acting out in front of an audience was probably the hardest part. Because I had to like, oh, what's my next line? Oh, right, this is my next line. I got to keep go going over that in, in my head. But the funny thing with theater, which I always tell people, sometimes we would know when we mess up, but they wouldn't know mm -hmm. if you messed up. Mm -hmm. So you always just keep going, and that's the key, because I've done a few plays. You know, you mess up a line here and there, but guess what? You might have a smooth save with it, because the audience wouldn't know. They don't have your lines. You know your lines. So the trick is to just keep going and being able to do this. So after that play is over, you know, what you decided, listen, I want to go in and, and really do this. So what was the next step for your parents when you told them and they saw how well you performed? Um, well, someone that was there at the play, um, they were, their son was also in the play. Um, they realized, they worked um, at this like theater um, and, and this company, the theater company, um, and they wanted me. To, they wanted to see if I could go to the theater company, like be a part of like the acting crew. Mm -hmm. um, and I said yes, but we're, they're not currently like in business right now. They're it starts back up in September. Right. That's great. And tell us a little bit about you're you're wearing a great T-shirt that says Little Malika International. Let's talk about that. Um, well, Little Malika actually actually means Little Angels in Swahili. Oh. And that's also the where I did the play. And I actually won Ambassador for the... I didn't win the Prince, but I won Ambassador, Best Talent, and the Social Media, Mr. Online Social Media. And I was really proud of myself for that, uh, even though I didn't win the, um, the Prince. But I was first runner up, as they say. But you still did pretty well. Some great accolades that you have going on. Oh uh, well, accolade was well, of course, the all the three. Of course, and that's what I mean. Like you did pretty well. It's nothing to to turn your nose up because that's pretty good. There's not a lot of people who could say they've done that. So that's that's awesome. Well, okay, Kaden, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. And when we come back, we got more with Caden right here. Stay with us.
Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. So, Kaden, now let's talk about the future, of course, because that's such a big thing. You know, you had this role, you love acting, your mom's involved. Actually, before, yes, let's talk about mom. Because your mom has been so important, and your dad as well, in making sure that everything is, you know, going forward. They're essentially managing your career and helping you, you know, get bookings and all that good stuff. So now you're learning the business aspect of it. Yes. What have you observed about the business aspect of the whole entertainment industry? Well, I don't really handle, like, the business. That's more so than my parents' jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and my dad, he gets the bookings because he books, like, famous stars, mm -hmm. um, singers and rappers, all those types of people. And I think it's going to be fun. But what about people who, I'm sure you see it all the time, where people, you know, celebrities who just don't actually take the time to learn the business aspect. Because you know it's important yes. to have that understanding because you don't want to just be the face and not know what's going on because that's how you get robbed. That's how things go wrong behind the scene. At least you have your parents who are backing you. But let's say you had outside people. You always have to have a little bit of that know-how to know what's going on with your business. What are you interested in academically? Mm, academically, well, I think I'm, in my eyes, I think I'm doing a pretty good job juggling school and um, my career. Uh, and, well, I'm going to middle school, mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to get beginning more homework. Uh, but I'm pretty good at math. Okay. And at the end of the school, I have to, like, this tutorial. We have to take after school, like, classes. And I think I'm, I should get my a, lot, a good portion of my homework done during that time. So aside from math, what are some of your other favorite subjects? Uh, I like science, reading, um, and literature. I've actually written a few stories. Two stories. You wrote two stories? Yes. Oh, let's talk about them. Uh, well, the first one, it was called Chaos, where, like, this brother of I forgot the names of the characters because my school has the books mm -hmm. um so this brother uh they were brothers and um one w who was named chaos uh had like this gene where he would like could control stuff um like his memory um and then make them real life wow mm -hmm. and they found they found like this removal thing but like they can remove that gene because he couldn't control his powers. So he was like creating a bunch of chaos around the city. Um, and that's why the story is actually called Chaos. And that's pretty much it. And what was the second one? The second one was called Demon Slayers. So these two kids get like these powers. Mm -hmm. um, one can like teleport, I think. <laughs> and oh, one can control time. And I forget what the other one, one's power is, but they they um find these there's like this demon dimension, uh, and they go into it. They're not, they're not like scary demons, but just regular demons. Um, and then they just slay and stuff. And then there's just the powerful demon, and they finally defeat him with the help of like a demon that's trying to like save the world. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So how did you actually come up with that? Both of those stories? Oh, well, they were both dreams I've had. Wow, okay. So I just turned it into a long story, a dream I've had. That's pretty interesting though. So, and it's funny that you said it's a dream and not a nightmare, so it wasn't scary for you. No. Well, I didn't really dream of it as a nightmare. Like it wasn't like scary at all because they were like they didn't the demons they weren't like they didn't look scary at all they were just regular red demons you know like